explores the famous Berlin sleeper on its way to raid Frosinone Airdrome near Rome. The 103 bombing missions of this remarkable fortress include targets in France, Holland, Belgium, Tunisia, Italian Libya, Pantelleria, Sardinia, Sicily, and Italy. The sleeper is now back in the States. Moving day for the 321st Bombardment Group brought thunderstorms, heavy showers, and mud. Planes, tractors, and men were bogged down to a snail's pace by the weather conditions. But in the 48 hours allotted for the job, the camp was torn down, equipment and supplies loaded and packed, and the movement completed. They used C-47 cargo planes and their own B-25s. 24 hours after they landed in Italy, the group flew their first mission. Thunderbolt crews at a fighter station of the 8th Air Force in Great Britain are detailed to escort flying fortresses on a bombing mission over Nazi Europe. While the pilots are briefed, ground crews have prepared the P-47s, loading machine gun ammunition, testing the guns, filling the auxiliary tanks for long range. These squadrons are leaving for the front, the great air front over Western Europe. rendezvous at the appointed time and place with the heavy bombers. And here are the heavies, giant flying fortresses that drop their tons of high explosives on pinpoint targets. As an attack by German Messerschmitts and Fokker-Wolfs is about to develop, the Thunderbolts peel off to intercept to protect their bombers. Done their job well, turned back the Hun, while the bombers released their destructive cargoes. In the process, many enemy fighters were down. As soon as the pilot lands, his crew chief rushes up to hear the score. But in addition to the pilot's account, there's a film record of action when the guns were fired. This camera, shooting alongside the fighters' guns, can give us precise evidence of what happened in the sky battle we've just seen. This roll of film will be rushed to the developer, and here's the story it tells. Good day's hunting by a thunderbolt. On the River Seine, halfway between La Havre and Paris, is today's target, La Trey. Objectives are power plants, boiler houses, repair shops, and shipyards. 36 B-26s took off, 33 attacked, protected by 11 squads of Spitfires. Workshops were hit with 40 tons of bombs. All vessels docked here were set afire as four other fighter squads swept the area. This was an extremely successful bombing mission 
since there were no losses or casualties for our side. On a mission over Saint-Nazaire, a fortress is attacked as she completes her bombing run. Hit fatally and engine smoking, the ship plummets down and crashes into the sea, a flaming comet. On a frosty English morning, an 8th Air Force crew trots to its plane, its engines turning over the famous Memphis Bell. They move down the line in their regular order. Armada of flying fortresses is taking off in a major daylight raid against northern Germany. They're going to strike at the heart of the enemy, Wilhelmshaven, a big naval base just west of the Danish peninsula. As they pass over the Frisian Islands, the windows are winking in the sun. Crossing over the continent, they approach the target. The Germans light hundreds of smoke pots to hide the harbor installations, but they're too late. This heavy flak indicates how important the target is. Bombs away! Now intercept is charge in. A battle royal takes place over the harbor. No 9 flashes by. The air is full of flak and Fokka Wolves and flying ports. Hits have been scored on ships, docks and warehouses. The destruction is terrific. Continual German interception at the height of the bombing, trying every kind of attack. American American Eagle drops out of formation, fading fast. But as the fortresses leave the smoking target behind, they resume formation, filling in gaps for the planes that won't make the round trip. Feathering its prop, this fortress limps back. At long last, home base. The mission has been completely successful, but we paid the price in men and materiel, and both must be replaced from home. This bombardier got a piece of shrapnel when the nose of the fortress was blown away in exchange for the several tons of bombs left in Wilhelmshaven. But the sky was ours. The steady, relentless bombing of Germany went on without ceasing. 